it's broken and in this video I'm gonna show you how I create pressure in my games by showing you two different matches one is a match where um, a spirit hard tunnel the first person they saw which was uh, my friend that usually plays Sabrina I wasn't as with of course as usual <laughs> in the other match uh, I get survivors to do three gems before I, I I think I even get one hook, or maybe I got one hook at that point. I am still playing Spirit on a much more difficult map for her, in my opinion, that spawns much stronger structures. But I still managed to get a 4k in the end, spoiler, um, because I create pressure despite having so few hooks at, and so many gens popped. Uh, why am I doing this? Because uh, I don't participate in Twitter drama, but I do see a lot of killers on Reddit being like, oh, but uh, you cannot win without tunneling and camping. Now, rest assured, you need to tunnel and camp when it's a correct call to make, of course, but when it's not, hard tunneling is not going to help you in the slightest. It's actually going to hinder um, your progress, what, both in learning and in um, getting a 4k in that specific match. So if you want to learn, if you want to get blood points, if you want to get better, it's a really good idea to um, actually create pressure. And I am going to show you in detail how I do it. I'm going to explain everything, everything that Spirit did wrong in my opinion, and how she could have gotten a comeback so many times in the match, but she chose not to, and how I got my comeback. Now, results may vary. Meaning that um, if I make a call, okay, sometimes it's for sure the correct call. Sometimes there are other factors that may actually influence um, that call. There may be like an equally good option that I am considering, but I'm choosing not to take based on the information I have. Um, of course, the survivors have more information than me, usually. <laughs> uh, and my call may be yes good but incorrect in that specific situation so my point is sometimes even if you play your best due to rng spawns and a couple of mistakes that maybe are not even that strong and impactful you actually lose the game but an eight hook games with zero kills is still more important for your progress your skill um and your blood points than a match where you camp one hook or you tunnel one person so Without further ado, let's delve into it, and I hope you're gonna find this video useful. I am surely having a lot of fun trying to explain to people how to get better. Bye! I am starting a little bit in the middle of the action because basically up until now it's been like 70 seconds, nothing happened, me and my friend are doubling on a generator. I know you shouldn't, but we don't play optimally. And here, we hear her coming here because uh, she has the foreign, but uh, you can hear that the foreign is directional when she's in her terror radius, like in her normal range, 24 meters. She sees my friend, takes a hit, and goes back to me. She has sloppy butcher, so this is a very good call, actually. Plus, I am deaf, I'm very noisy. Uh, so she hits me. I have Shaq. Shaq is a very strong structure. It's understandable that she leaves me and goes back to harass someone else. So up until now, she makes a very good play. She manages to injure another person, which is great. She downs the person and gets a hook. Up until now, she has played greatly. She has two injured people, one on hook, and she basically doesn't know the approximate position of only one of us. Now she does. <laughs> So, the game has started really well for her, actually. And we also know half of her build, which is uh, Fimonger and Sloppy Butcher for now. She may have Lidl, but maybe not, because she didn't find anyone. So she's going after the other person again. She knows where two people are, because there is an unhook, plus the person she's chasing. She decides to go after me again, probably to get ahead. I think she, yeah, she leaves me here. Okay, you know, that's a call. You you can make the call. She finds my friend again. She takes a hit and she sees me and correctly thinks if she wants to actually um, chase me, she chooses not to. Whatever, she goes after my friend here, I think. Ok, 
okay, she keeps chasing my friend. Up until now, everything is normal, everything is correct, and, uh, you know, she gets down because she's spirit, she's a strong antelope, she's a very strong killer. Uh, one jump pops, and mine is very progressive, she already knows it because she kicked it before, or she saw it being progressed, it doesn't really matter. So she gets a hook now, and she's at two hooks, we did basically two jumps. I am wondering which adult she has because she hasn't faced up to me much, so I don't understand. She finds me, she hits me. This would be a great time to chase me. I am deaf, I am super loud. She can get a very easy down here. I mean, I'm a spirit man to be fair, but she doesn't know that. And she leaves me again, which is crazy. Characters like Bill and so on and so forth, you should chase them because they're loud. She goes back to hook. I don't know if you saw. Um, I'll show you. Give me a second. When I wait to see if she's actually coming after me, here, you can see her here facing. She's going back to hook. And this is where she will start hard tunneling, despite having a deaf injured and two people that she has no idea what they're doing. My friend is off the record and she uh, decided to go through it. Now, uh, Lori is a pretty loud character, it's pretty easy to track a spirit, but still um, there are two people, me and um, Dania, that have no hooks, no pressure at all. I am injured doing a jump because I don't care. And she has no idea what the mag is doing. So, why? <laughs> why hard tunneling when it's taking you so long after hitting the off the record to actually get anything? Now, I suppose I'm going to go to the mag to get healing, I guess. I have all the time to get healed while the lorry keeps getting chased. Now, I do understand that having a people on that hook is a great idea, but you have three people that are just doing whatever they want. They don't care. Lori even has the time um, to mend uh, before the spirit catches her again. Like, <laughs> that was clearly a bad chase. If this person had 12 seconds of inactivity during the chase to man, that was stupid. Let's move on. Uh, we know that Denia was doing a gen. Uh, she left it for progress. And now me and the Meg are doubling up on a gen for a while until I go get the Anok. The Nia is going on with her gen, it's basically almost done. This is a really good time to check the few gens that you have left. You have some um, clusters of gens here. I don't know exactly the spawns because of course I cannot see them, but at least two gens are very close together. Take a look! Now here I am, I, again I am Jeff, I am trying to take a hit for my teammate because even having Lori that hook right now, like even having her dead, will not change the outcome. Like this is a point where you, even if you have two people busy, which is me and the Lori here, this is not gonna change the outcome of your game. This is a great point to actually spread pressure as much as possible, like leave the Lori completely, completely. She may even avoid touching Jens because it makes more sense uh, for her to be hiding. Uh, but she chooses not to not to hit me. She chooses not to hit me at all. She rather hard tunnel, get her 1k and whatever. Well, she could have spread pressure to me because I would have run away after the body block and then checked on the gens. The mag went down pretty quickly. So that could have also been a good chase. And I understand completely ignoring the Nia because she's not seeing her. But three other people would have been perfectly decent targets. We do our best here, we try to take hits or whatever. We don't care because our friend is doing the gens. The gens are done. 
and we try to take heads, we try to do something, but we are like, whatever, the, the hook is too close, and we're gonna get three people out. Easily. Because she refuses to even hit any of us. If she even hit one of us, you know, not even for a body block, for whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, she would have actually gotten more value because it would have been easier to track uh, the person and for some trades, get more hooks. This is not even many blood points at the end of the day. So, uh, I mean, my friends go out, let's move on with me just... I don't remember what I did, but I, I remember being very toxic in Endgame. I remember waiting at the gate and being like, you know, why do you have to play like this? Because you don't gain anything by playing like this. You don't get blood points. The person that you handle don't get blood points. The other people that basically do just gens and chew on hooks don't get blood points. Like, why do you even play like this? This was our build, by the way. Three slowdowns, okay. One, two being pop and pure rest, which are pretty strong. The Yakuyoka and the Furin. Now the Furin is a meme, but the Yakuyoka is a very good add-on, and I, I kind of, yeah, I, I got toxic. I, I agree, <laughs> and I'm sorry. These are our builds. In case you wanna check if we gen rushed air quotes, we don't even have a proof itself. We have nothing. We have nothing. We have chase builds and one perk for healing because it's the case <laughs> it's the case so this is how to not play killer she even got less blood points than us like brother but let's see how i got my match up in a much more dire situation than this <laughs> Sorry if the game on you is a little bit high. But I'm playing spirit, so. I am trying to understand where the survivors are, and my spawn guessing are actually incorrect, because I would have bet they would be on one of those two gens I checked. They're actually in this one. I see a survivor. I am lowering the volume because this is pain. I haven't played spirit in a while, so. I am kind of garbage, but I hear her vaulting back into me. I'll show you. I'll show you. Here. Give me a sec. That mm, that you hear is the slow vault back. In case you're interested, you can actually um, replicate it. By using any means necessary to fool a spirit into thinking you vaulted back. That's the best feeling ever. That's the best feeling ever. We tried with a friend. But let's move on. I get a hit. I don't really know what structures are around. So I keep chasing her. There is a pallet here and I'm 4.4. It's very painful. This pallet is hard to mind me with a spirit. My tracking is not the best right now. I <laughs> whip. I get a pallet in the face and I'm like, you know what? Uh, fuck this mic. <laughs> I keep folding around. I go Shaq. Shaq is a hard tile spirit. Uh, I'm trying to look at scratch marks, understand where she is. This is a bad distance. Uh, if you're playing spirit, I do not manage to get Shaq pallet down and I'm like, uh, that is a cringe. So I leave her. How long was this? A little bit longer. One jump pops and I'm like... I have nowhere to hide, so I think I kick this right now to save someone else in the ground. But due to the progress of the gen, there was not much. I don't think anyone is around. Someone started this gen and left. I don't know. I kick pallets. So I am basically doing nothing. Like this is almost two minutes into the game. And I am doing nothing. I also do not have any gen slowdowns except for Jolt. And I, as you can see, my Zopi Puchin value right now is not through the roof. 
I suppose the mag is going to be healed somewhere or to heal herself, but I don't know. What is here? The gen is gone. Like, yes, I hit her, but. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait for my power to recharge. Not her gen pops. This is 2 minutes 26, okay? I I'll also show you the builds of these guys after the match. She's a fang, she's very loud, the bill is there to take a hit, but I'm pretty confident I can actually get her here, because I hear her doing this. I have this tendency to face on top of survivors and get lost, but I know, so I find her. There is a pitiful flesh at save attempt. <laughs> I get one hook. Two gens have popped. Two gens, contrary to the one gen that had popped in the other spirit match. I don't know where the survivors are, except for Bill. I only know the two gens had been started, but I don't know by whom. What do I do though? I let him get the Yanok, uh, and I actually go pressuring this gen. It's hard to follow scratch marks to the corn, but I actually managed to do it. Shack Pallet is still up. This is a bad chase. I recognize it, but she's going through the corn, so I try to at least get ahead. My tracking is garbage. This is a bad chase. Like, this was a good chase if I could get ahead, but my tracking was terrible. So I decide to take a look at the gens and use her face for building. Someone is here. I hit them. This was the same mag as before, but now I know that she's running through a dead zone that she herself created. So she knows it and I know it. And I'm curious to know how she's gonna play it. Um, this is still a jungle gym, so the window is still good. I hear someone working here. Um, and I whiff. <laughs> then I hit the wheel. I know that there are no structures here. And to the left there is only a um, harvester that not many people know to run. He runs into me. It's okay. I'm happy. <laughs> now two people need to heal through Zoppy Butcher. I know where the Michaela is. And uh, my fault here was that I wanted Shark Pelican. I try to think about where I could go. I see no one around with nowhere to hide. And I decide to check that other gen because it had progress. Someone is here. It was the still injured thing that decided to actually do the gen instead of healing. And the sake, especially against the spirit plaything. Now she's second hook. What if I camped there? She would be second hook now. Second hook now. And I wouldn't have the other two hooks that I actually have. I go back to hook. It's the right call because I actually managed to hit the build again and to get a free hit on the Michaela. I can pick him up facing the wall so I don't care about the flash. Now, why is this possible? Two reasons. First one, the plaything. The plaything makes it so your face. Uh, since you're um, not gonna have a terror radius for that survivor, is non-directional, as far as I know, because I never play against spirit with plaything, but I see that when I use plaything, I can actually face on top of the survivors and they don't hear me normally, basically. And because the two gens they have been working on were pretty close, I am choosing to ignore this gen in the corner, uh, at least until this plaything is up, hoping they didn't see it. I don't know because I uh, haven't um, seen the what's her name. I haven't seen the Michaela for not the Michaela, sorry, the uh, Meg for a while. But I am hoping that even if she's doing the one, she will have to heal or come to me. So I'm hoping this is not enough pressure. This is a good call, and there is like no debating that because the two gens were pretty close. If you're a spirit, if the gens were too much far away of course this wouldn't have been a problem but see that they are not um strictly trigen now at all i don't know if there would be a way to show it like one gen is here super far away the other is super far away and the other two, two are close okay so they complete the gen they prioritize the gen which i would 
also have ads. This jungle gym is still up. She makes a bad call again because of plaything. And I think she's that over here. They are one jungle. And I have five hooks with one person that. This is a good example of tunneling. I didn't even want to tunnel this person and I didn't need to because everyone, everyone was injured. Every hit would have been good. But thanks to Playthink, she runs into me and I get a hook. She's dead. And I know that there are no more hooks in this corner, but I don't care because there are no more gens. This is not even a three gen. Two gens are closed. The last one is in the corner. So I'm not regening, I'm not camping, and I'm not purposefully tunneling. Like, the thing literally came to me. So, <laughs> you take what you get. I wasn't even going for her. But yes, she died. And one gen. I mean, we are at six minutes. So just by spreading hooks and hitting everyone I can and taking every free hit they give me, I have now delayed the game four minutes, okay? four minutes which is gonna be enough uh, I would probably kick every gem possible <laughs> for nowhere to hide value but I cannot this gens have not been worked on they are resetting but I don't wanna leave my tree gen basically my tree gen my <laughs> my tree gens yes I don't wanna leave them <laughs> so I just go around and try to see where they are they know that this gen exists but I don't know where they are I suppose they're probably on the far corner of the map, but since only one person has not reset for now, I think she's gonna reset very soon, she does, and it's just snowboarding. I hear footsteps, it's a Megan, I hear her. I see scratch marks that are not hers, that decide to go back to the there is someone, I don't know, I don't see them because of the corn. Uh, but I see that someone else is walking on this gen, it's the Michaela. I face because Michaela is very hearable. Here I am on top of her. <laughs> my tracking is a little bit too good for my own good. So two people are injured and what I am desperately trying to achieve by staying here is getting the shack pallet. She drops it, she doesn't panic about it. I decide to break it for the future. Now I'm fine. She clicks at me. Uh, am I wondering if I want to take the bait? I see a crow, so I know that someone is there. It's and it's not Michaela because Michaela was going there. So I finally managed to down this mech. Now so many people wouldn't have even picked up because this is our first book. Not See how not many hooks I have? I don't have many hooks at all. But still, I decide to hook. Because now they have to come to the other side of the map. I actually go through the animation and someone is here already. Cowtree still has pallet up. So unless I catch her out of position, I'm gonna leave and go back to the gen. I don't catch her out of position, I leave. I go back to the gen. I see scratch marks, this is Bill, Bill is LT. He tries to go through the window, but I hit him, and if a Bill getting hit against a spirit, unless you're the strongest club in the world, it's basically a sentence. He has the H, I kick the pallet, I can still track him very easily because it's super loud. Evolves. I make a call that is a back. He does. I get auto aimed into him. Weirdly. I think he's that look here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he's not wiggling his that look. Now there is an injured um, back and a healthy Michaela. And the mag heals. By just spreading hooks, I managed to get this game to make them take um, seven minutes, seven minutes to do one gen by sheer hook spreading. Okay, let's move on. I am in chase. I don't know with who. I can't see shit. So I decided to ignore it. 
they're not doing this jump. All I need to do here is patrolling jumps because that's it. <laughs> that, that's, how, that's how it works. I see something, but I decide to do the anyway to make sure they have started to work on these gems. All the gems are at zero. Whoever I find now is a good game, basically. So I take a look. They have not tapped it. Mm. I go back to the other gem. This is possible because I'm spirit. If I was a killer with a non distance power, this would have been much, much harder. I see scratch marks. This is a killer. I expect the spring burst here. There's no spring burst. Um, I wait for my power to recharge while I keep following your scratch marks. I find scratch marks to be very easy to find in the corn most of the time, uh, while the people are kind of harder to see. She goes to cow tree, but now I know that unless she loops me for 90 seconds, I have her. And she falls for the oldest mind game in the book. <laughs> I'm gonna skip to the hook because otherwise it's very boring. I get her hooked, go back to the jump, try to see where Mag is. I let them save because at this point, you know, there are still four hooks left. Why not get in blood points? Uh, I decide to tunnel the Michaela because they are both first up. I mean, why not? Unless she has the age and she is. That gem gets jolted again. <laughs> this is why jolt is so good in spirit. Like. Now I have to look for the bank. I have no idea where she is. She may be hiding in a locker. I don't know. I don't know anything. This tap 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 that you hear is the fire. I I see scratch marks, and then I see a micro running in the corner. Um, here, she pops something. I take a bat, and it's not a step tick. It could have been a step tick. It was not. And I get her, and I her. And this is how the game ends. So, let's look at the end game screen and talk a little bit about jump rushing, okay? So, these are their perks. There's nothing that says gem rushing. There's a proof they have, like a single one, but besides I think two chances, I saw them being on the gems alone. All the perks I see here are chase perks, we even have a self-care. Okay. <laughs> they didn't bring two boxes. I didn't bring anything peculiarly strong, and neither did I, to be fair. Uh, I love these adults, but they're not mother daughter Yaku Yoke. And still, I managed to turn back um, the situation in my favor by spreading hooks. So, this is it. And uh, first of all, just rushing, unless you find a squad that brings two boxes, hyper focus, brand new parts and prove they have and whatever the hell, jump rushing does not exist. These people managed to do three times in two minutes because I wasted a little bit too much time. Um, I didn't kick some pallets immediately. I didn't make the best calls and I had good spawns. And you don't have to be good to do gents. So they were there and they were like, okay, let's do gents. Why not? That's the correct thing to do. But as a killer, believe me, it doesn't matter how many gens they did, spreading injuries and hook state is going to bring you much more value, both in the game and in the long run, than tunneling someone. That's it. <laughs> Have fun and don't be cringe. Bye.